Hello and welcome to an Infinity Army update hot take. It's been about 20 minutes at least since I got home and learned that the Army update had dropped, so we're just going to have a look. We're going to have a look, talk about our first impressions, basically give an assessment some of the changes and see what's going on. We're not going to start with Bakunin, we're going to have a look at some other stuff first, then we'll come through to them. So first things first, in Hack Islam, we have a new Hassassin IR profile. It's a hidden deployment profile with a Burst 4 rifle, an emitter, and a Panzerfaust. Corvus Belly continues to try and make the AR interesting and continues to fail. No, that's not fair. The AR is interesting. That's probably its greatest sin, is that it's not quite good enough to play, but it is interesting. This profile is just a lot like the other hidden deployment profiles. If you weren't playing the Breaker Rifle, you're not playing this one. Do I prefer it to the Breaker Rifle? Honestly, not particularly. I like plus one burst, but the Breaker Rifle gives you a chance to do damage to a variety of targets, which the plus one burst rifle doesn't. And really, it's the viral pistols that you're usually playing with, with the AR in any case. So look, is this going to see play? Only if you were already playing the AR, and most people are not. It's an incredible model. They are interesting profiles, but they really don't quite succeed. Maybe next time. Next up, we have a Pan-Oceania nerf, and I have no idea why. Both Bulleteer profiles have increased in cost. I think it's something like four points for the Spitfire, three points, four points for the Heavy Shotgun, three points for the Spitfire. I don't know why. I, I don't know why this has happened. Uh, these were good profiles, they were attractive profiles, and now they're less attractive and less good. I assume there's some kind of data or something that Corvus Belly have that was like, maybe they're subtly overperforming, but to pay attention to this is a little bit weird. Uh, I think bulleteers are basically still fine, but it's definitely more challenging to use them, and it's certainly more challenging to use the 17-point bulleteer in those factions where it could link in like an interesting way to I've had a link to add a repeater, etc. Uh, I basically a bit confused in terms of this one. I'm not sure what my reaction is other than why. Why did this need to change? Uh, I would be very interested to learn that if anyone has any insight. But yeah, sucks for Panoceania for no particular reason. Next, we're jumping over to Vanilla 012 or some undocumented changes. If you've looked at the changelog, you won't have seen these. Uh, one of them is that Casanova has picked up a meme profile with infiltration plus three. Does not have mine layer in this profile, has a submachine gun, has his EM mines, 34 points. He's Fizz 11, which means that if he is going over the halfway line with a plus 3, he is rolling not good. He is rolling 4 and 11. Theoretically, you could take him and Andromeda in the list now and just be like, one of them will succeed, they'll be my two reserves. And you know what? That might actually be a viable tactic, except by god, that's 66 points or something to make that play. If you're going first, it could be good, but like, Casanova is cool, interesting profile, but like, hmm. Uh, there is also a bronze update. Uh, some of the bronze profiles have changed, but a big one is a heavy machine gun. What is much more significant about Star Marta is not what was added, but what wasn't. And what wasn't added to, so Vanilla 012, what wasn't added to Vanilla 012 is everything that was added to Star Marta. Of particular note, no roadbots. I was actually personally really hoping for roadbots in 012. I kind of felt like they were part of the rounding out of 012 as a good vanilla faction. And they have completely failed to materialize. They are a totally unique unit in Starmada, which sucks a lot. Even AVA-1 in 012 would have been like a wonderful piece to add. Uh, so yeah, there go my hopes and dreams of playing 012 in an upcoming event. I was strongly considering it based on what would come for them in this army update. And the fact that for practical purposes, nothing has when I was hoping for a very cool good boy robot is a bit disappointing. Uh, let's jump over to Starmata. So here we are in Starmata, and a totally unexpected glow-up has occurred. I don't think it's a significant enough glow-up to get over my significant disappointment about some of these units not being in Vanilla 012, but we really do need to evaluate how Starmata has changed, because it absolutely has. The new units in order are we have the expected robots, Notably, they are AVA2, they are pretty much exactly as they were spoiled. I have not noticed any changes, except that there seem to be more profiles. I don't know if these Red Fury profiles were present in the original spoiler, but I was basically playing with a Marksman Rifle, so this is new, right? Red Fury profiles. They are AVA2, and they have a hell of a link. They can only duo, 
but they can duo as part of what is called a road fire team with law keepers, which we don't care about, and Oko Copper bots, which we do. Those are the forward observer remotes, which means that at least in this season, you can have a team of a robot highway patrol and an Oko Copper bot, and this is this is sex on legs for what forty two points. This gives you a tactical awareness order, a good combi rifle, a specialist, all of the cool stuff going on with the robot. This is this is ridiculous. For 42 points, this is incredible, and you can have two of them. So, like, we could add in a Red Fury here, another Oko, because Okos are AVA2 in Starmata, just like they are in O12. Hot damn. This is, like, this is incredibly efficient, incredibly dangerous, incredibly fast. It even can defend a little bit, just because the robots are tough enough to maybe take a defense. I am impressed by this, and... I think this faction seriously warrants some consideration literally off the back of this. But that is not all that has been picked up by Stamata. We've also had a randomly a new infiltration unit added. Now, this has not been added to O12. I would have liked it in O12, but whatever. Basically, what we have here are just kind of like slightly expensive generic skirmishes. They have everything that you'd kind of expect. Fears 12, Armor 1, BTS 3, that's nice. They are only Ballistic Skill 11, but they do have Climbing Plus. And they have a very attractive boarding shotgun mine layer profile, totally nice. They have a boarding shotgun killer hacker profile, totally nice, whip 12, BS 13. And they have a very interesting submachine gun wild parrot forward observer profile. Now the SMG, I'm very, very mixed on. They're a ballistic skill 11 unit. I'm not like slinging shots with them. If I can avoid it, I'd rather use a template. But this is, the wild parrots are good. Wild parrots are really good. So these, you can only have two of these, they're AVA2, and they're not cheap, and they will kind of always be a bit obvious what they are, because there is functionally no other midfield. Uh, there are no Beast Hunters in O12, in Starmada. If we do a quick search for skills camouflage, we will literally see just the Sarko. So very interesting profile. It suffers from what you would call skirmisher challenge in sectorals, where there's no fog of war. Uh, if there are three of these, one of them is going to be a mine layer. Your opponent will just always know what's going on. If there are two of them, well, maybe one of them's a mine layer. Maybe it's one mine layer, or maybe it's two Sarkos. That would be expensive. Like, there's not a lot of not a lot of guessing to be done as to what is under these template, under these camouflage markers, but they are good. They're genuinely pretty good. The other significant thing is the new Secu Droid. Now, this is... At first glance, I looked at the stat line and went, what the hell? Because 20 points, CC11, para CCW minus 9, BS11, armor 2, BTS6, 2 structure, 360 visor, and remote presence, courage, mimetism 3, climbing plus. But that's because of their armament. They are literally armed with almost entirely non-lethal weapons. You choose between an adhesive launcher or an acrylate canone. I think I would usually choose the adhesive launcher. And then you can also get a heavy pistol, para CCW, plus one burst flash pulse. The reason why I would usually choose the adhesive launcher is because of the link options. Secu droids can go, they have climbing plus, they can go in both beta trooper links where they count as beta troopers. Um, you could even have an epsilon there if you wanted to, so you could have them, you could have a very easy way of, if you want like a beta trooper, a secu droid, and an epsilon is kind of like very neat Harry's team. And they can go in sec security links where they count as security troopers. Now these are not like, these are not Morat level links. These are not, we'll see you soon, Bakunin level links. They don't have the same kind of like Omega gun, but I honestly don't think I mind something like an Epsilon unit, HMG, a random R secu droid, and then a beta trooper to round out the link. Let's say, hell, a doctor, right? Because the doctor will sit behind the Epsilon. This, again, not cheap. Like, look, we've already spent a ton of points. This is a pretty good little Harry's team. Uh, you could chuck another secu droid onto it, but you only have two, um, and you only have one per one per beta trooper link, and one per raven isle, um, one per security link. But these these add to, like, O12 has always had a very mild, how do you defend problem, where their defenses, particularly in N4, are not fantastic. Uh, gangbusters in N4, like in vanilla, are not as good as they used to be. I'm talking about O12, because Stamata has only existed for a certain period of time. Um, 
the you know serious used to rely on like gangbusters and serious teams and they were kind of okay but they weren't fantastic and especially not fantastic in n4 and then starmada comes in and you don't even have that starmada has had like the rama issue of what are our defenses well we have varangians and raven eyes just recently and raven eyes are good the raven eye deployment zone defense is kind of nice and we've got side bots now i feel like the the picture is coming together in Starmada. And if you need to shoot, you can always throw in a tag, although we're getting pretty pricey at this point. So, look, I am disappointed. I am disappointed that 012 Vanilla, I'm a Vanilla faction player, I'm not going to lie there, um, didn't get some of these very cool things. They didn't get the secu the, um, the Sarkos. I can't have a midfield of, like, a Monster Hunter and two Sarkos. I can't have my sweet ass, you know, road bot. Uh, and I didn't even get the Secu Droids, which I didn't even expect to exist. But there is nevertheless some very interesting stuff happening. I think if the if the Alpha unit was in Starmata, I'd be jumping onto them. It's not, and it's one of my favorite pieces from Vanilla, but there is something here now, particularly starting with this absolute bullshit, right? These four boys. There is something that can be done with Starmata that I think is potentially strong. So keep your eye open for that. All right, on to part one of the main event, and now we're in Nomads. There are a bunch of small changes and a bunch of big ones before we even get to Bakunin. Little stuff, there's a moderator. Where are we at? Moderators, moderators have got a boarding shotgun. Uh, nine points for a boarding shotgun cheerleader is genuinely not bad, but when you're taking moderators, it is usually because you're taking a lieutenant and you need a decoy. So this profile will see very, very little play. But as far as cheerleaders go, uh, you would pay two points more to upgrade to a Jaguar, but if you genuinely can't pay two points more to upgrade to a Jaguar, it's a boarding shotgun. It's not the worst cheerleader. Is it better than a flash pulse remote? Mm -hmm. Depends how many repeaters you have in your deployment zone already. Not terrible. Uh, next up, we have a new Lobos profile. I'm not sure what changed. It may have it's it's listed as an edited profile, um, but the specialist operator breaker combi has apparently changed. I don't care. No one is using Lobos in vanilla. Then we get to the Bakunin profiles. So in terms of stuff that has changed and stuff that is new, I'm going to go through all of the various reverends and moiras and stuff, I think in the Bakunin section, which we'll get to soon, but and we'll talk about their impact on vanilla. But in terms of new profiles, as we scroll through to heavy infantry, there are two. The first is Robin Hook, which we knew about. At 23 points, this is an incredibly cool profile. Is it incredibly good? It's not bad, but in Vanilla Nomads, you have that kind of like, oh, what does it do? Well, it's a forward deploying, incredibly mobile, uh, stealthy repeater. For 23 points with the th other things that she does, like she drops drop bears, she's really, really cool, but you kind of have to displace like, okay, it's Nomads, Masai Morans exist. I am actually the argument that you do not always want to take Masai Morans exclusively, and I can kind of see replacing a Masai Moran with her in order to have Morris WC. She is unquestionably very fun to play. There are things that she'll be able to do, like 6-2 movement with the, the wonderful combination of Super Jump and Climbing Plus, uh, and she keeps her repeater even if she transmutes. She's very, very fun. She's very interesting. I want to play with her and see how she plays. I think there are going to be games where she does not much for 23 points, and there are games can be games where she makes people very mad. And that's kind of the Nomad way, but definitely super cool. In terms of things that are going to make people mad, Demonist Observance. Now, what is this? Lieutenant plus one order. In Vanilla Nomads, Counterintelligence as well. Oh boy, did Nomads just get a Lieutenant? Yes, a lieutenant with plus one order in a faction that has a couple of okay NCOs. Huh, that's interesting. This is going to piss people the hell off. It's also not particularly good. This is a huge premium to play to pay for plus one order on top of the like gator that you are taking um, in order to make the maximum use of this. Right, 112 points already paid, and yes, okay, this is one, two, three, four, five orders out of two troopers. You can get many orders on the gator, but this is this is a even though she has ECM hacker, this is a 36 point oblivion susceptible heavy infantry lieutenant. I don't hate that she's got a Vulcan shotgun that she can feasibly fight a little bit, 
Um, she's even got a decoy, which you, sometimes is going to come up and it will be really annoying to people, but realistically they'll just split burst on, they'll like, try and land a repeater on both of them, split burst Oblivion, and you'll be quite sad, because there's no chain of command in Nomad still. You'll have to keep her safe. It is definitely possible, it is definitely possible to keep a model like this safe and make use of it, but at the end of the day, what you are effectively paying for, if you compare her with literally just a single ass moderator from Bakun and Lieutenant, you are paying 27 points for one order. That's not a good deal. 27 points, yes, it's one more order over the theoretical maximum you could previously have, but 27 points for one, almost 10% of your entire army for one order. Okay, sure, technically speaking, you'd be paying nine points for the moderator, so, you know, no, 20, it's still, it's a 27-point premium over the alternative, yeah. 10% almost of your entire army for one order is not a good trade. That said, she is interesting, she is fun. If you use her, I will not judge her. But the people who are getting angry over this about things like power level are silly to do so. If you have some kind of a point about how, oh, okay, Nomads, one of their inherent weaknesses was that they couldn't make use of their command structure, I am moderately sympathetic to that. Um, she's even Silhouette 4, like, by God. <laughs> oh, thank goodness she has Decoy. I will be able to place two Silhouette 4 demonologists. In, in locations that will each convincingly be real. Like, no, get over it. Um, this is not a particularly good profile, but it is potentially interesting, potentially fun. Um, I won't begrudge someone for using this, but do not. I'm not going to be including this in my lists, except maybe as an experiment. In terms of other stuff that's new, we then get to the Stigmata of the Observance, one of the few new profiles. I think I've jumped past Agatha, I'll go back to her. Um, Stigmata of the Observance, one of the few new profiles added to Vanilla. Uh, I love this, and I have no idea how good it is. It is doing so many things differently that it is almost impossible to fully evaluate. It has only a Heavy Rocket Launcher plus one burst, but it has... Uh, BS-13, I thought it had Mimetism for some reason, That maybe it doesn't. I think it used to have Mimetism in the original spoiler, but I could be completely wrong. Um, it's literally a burst 3 BS-13. It's not setting the world on fire. I have used a, I've used an Overdrawn that is doing basically very similar things, and it is fundamentally just an okay piece, although you do have better, easier access to engineers, and it has the wonderful, wonderful remote presence. In all other respects, it is basically an overdrawn that exchanges its submachine gun for a heavy flamethrower and gets rid of its completely freaking useless albedo. But then it is a hacker. It is just randomly a hacker with a carbonite upgrade, and ECM hacker, and BTS-6. The fact, I have seen some people already respond to this when the profile was originally spoiled, saying something like, oh, your opponent can kill or hack your tag. If my opponent spends their entire turn trying to kill or hack this stigmata, while it is either carbonite plus two down, or like it, it's oblivioning them, even if it's resetting, but if it's oblivioning them the back, like, and then you can repair it if they don't put it all the way to dead, this is, this is incredibly interesting profile is a way of getting a hacker into a list without spending the troop slot on the hacker, but it is hard to know. Like the, the obvious incredible support for this is Zoe, but then you have a hacker in the form of Zoe and it's Nomad, so we should probably include Jazz. And at that point we have three hackers and we don't really need the third one. Two is kind of the sweet spot for like good defensive mix, but maybe we take the three. I mean, we've got a cheaper SWC repeater now in, in Hook. I, I love this profile. I love it absolutely to bits, and I have no idea how to use it. It's not a gun. I, it's it's to burst three heavy rocket launcher. It's possible. It's fine, but it's not incredible. It doesn't replace something like a salamandra or a gator. We'll probably prefer the salamandra of the two, except for SWC requirements. Um, so like, I don't know how to use this. I think it's awesome. I'm so happy to have it. I want to play with it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's cool, and it will require considerable experimentation. Okay, really quickly, jumping back to Maga Mother Hila Agatha Wabara. Really significant change from when she was spoiled to what she has now. No wound incapacitation. That makes a huge difference. Uh, so she is not cheap. 38, 39 points. Vulcan shotgun, breaker combi rifle. I would be leaning towards the breaker combi rifle because she's BS-13, mimetism minus six. Uh, this is a really good profile. 
it's expensive. It's an infantry model just walking forward and fighting. But I've used like I've used an Asawira doctor to good effect. You just you chuck a thing on it, chuck a helper bot, you move it forward, you doctor something. Um and she has frenzy, but then so does the Asawira. She has a breaker combi rifle. She's way better at gunfighting than the Asawira is. She is, I think, actually either slightly more expensive or exactly the same price, but she is as good a doctor. Um this is a very interesting profile. I think this is almost like this is probably vanilla viable. I just don't know what it plays around. I think you're going to use her moving up the field, doing things like re just randomly recovering stuff like I mean, Morlocks that have gone unconscious. You could even potentially use her. Having access to her in the same list as a Kreisa Borak makes me like the Kreisa Borak considerably more. But yeah, she's a tricky read on making use of the Doctor. But she is a fantastic gunfighter. She can defend herself and fight very well in close combat. Uh, she is also going to completely obviate anyone who's taking a reverent healer is using her as a proxy for Ab Agatha Wabara. Very interesting profile, not cheap, very cool. The last change in vanilla that I want to cover before I move on to Bakunin uh, is actually a change Bakunin profile, but it is Bran de Castro. Where are you, Bran? Um, Bran has been given a ridiculous and very very good series of improvements his uh his stats have been consolidated you know basically he's always a specialist you pick between a boarding shotgun and a breaker combi rifle and frankly both of those are excellent and the reason why both of those are excellent is that he has no wound incapacitation and shock now this is obscene on an infiltration plus six fizz 13 super mobile dangerous monkey man uh, he has lost climbing plus, which is interesting. So that's he's paid a little bit, right? He just he just quote unquote has super jump, and that is genuinely a loss because the combination of climbing plus and super jump is hilariously fun. But he's he's cooked. Oh, six two movement as well. Like he's cooked. He is okay. No model over thirty two points can realistically be called an auto include, but he is as close to an auto include at the cost. That I have seen. Uh, this this man scares me. Uh, he he because he has shock immune no wound gap. He can like break a Libertos cordon. Not that as a camouflage marker, rather than impersonation. He's out to pin him with Libertos anyway. Like this is really good. Like this is dangerously good. We've seen stuff like um, the like the infiltration plus six now down to infiltration plus three pieces like Andromeda. Andromeda has guards. It's not quite the same. But this is possibly one of the most dangerous impersonation style pieces in the game. Just because of the things that you can do with that kind of resilience. The fact that he can always break a random chain rifle cordon and get into a link or something, especially with 6-2 move, like he is going to win some games by himself on the first turn. And I am genuinely not sure how to fully effectively defend against him. Uh, this is going to cause, this is going to require some adaptation, and I genuinely think pretty much every vanilla list and most Bakunin lists will start with this guy. Aaron, if you watch this, fuck. Aaron is a, uh, Aaron is a Brando Castro player, so is Kyle. We have Brando Castro players in Canberra, and it scares me that they have access to this. All right, on to Bakunin. Okay, Bakunin, main event. We're going to break this down by category, light, medium, heavy, etc. Uh, talk maybe about fire teams as we go through. The light infantry stuff has seen very, very little change. Basically, the only thing that is relevant is that we have that new moderator profile. You may actually see this. For nine points, you may see this in Bakunin if you are doing something that requires a moderator link where you could just randomly chuck one in. I don't know if you will, but this is probably the most likely use case for the new moderator. All right, everything else is medium. Moira's up first. I don't remember how they changed. No, actually, check that. One second. Okay, I have my my app on mobile has not updated. Okay, those are some significant points decreases. Um, I was going to say I'm just going to evaluate these on their own merits, but it is very hard to look at a new Reverend Moira costing like seven points cheaper per model and not go, yeah, that's kind of okay. Uh, there seems to be some inconsistency across the points costing. So for example, a Reverend Moira, Moira HMG has decreased by seven points, whereas a Reverend Moira with just regular old multi-rifle has gone down by considerably less. Specialist operative 
wasn't something they had access to previously. So I'm not, that's a bit inconsistent and a bit weird. Um, but obviously what they have gained is they have gained Frenzy. This is going to impact them in vanilla, I think. Um, there was a significant possibility that a HMG Moira as a, like, just random solid fire piece in vanilla could become a thing. And I think it probably still can. But Frenzy actually makes that more difficult than it would otherwise have been. I've I've actually been thoroughly jobbed by Moiras, uh, just a random Moira in Combat Group 2. Think of it as like a, a proto-Gator, right? This was before Gators existed, but just using using the plus one Lieutenant Order from losing the losing the one Lieutenant Order from something. And at seven points cheaper, uh yeah, absolutely. Definite win is the HMG, but this is this is an interesting change. 30 points now to step back on their own merits. Mimetism 6 is a fantastic skill. BS12 is a mediocre ballistic skill. It's fine, and they can form pure links, which means that they're going to be BS15. It's an expensive pure link, but they can do it. BS15, Mim6, Burst 5. That's a very, very good gun up until it gets crit, or it gets hit by a template, because there's a 30-point single wound trooper. I think this has definite potential. I think you may even see, if we look really quickly at like what an observance link looks like, the core is going to be built around Moira's. You can put uh, you can put two Cenobites in, and the Cenobites are genuinely the cheapest model. We'll get to it in a second. So this core is expensive as hell, but it can get you BS15. Otherwise, I think, look, Moira's have definitely improved. There is possibly even an argument in vanilla for an unlinked specialist multi-rifle zapper. 25 points, NCO, if you aren't using a gator, uh, just to run around, be useful, go into suppressive fire, I don't mind that at all. The Sniper, the HMG, um, these pieces will be good. It's going to be up to Bakunin players to find out how to use them and to keep them safe from basically aggressive template stuff. Because it's the Moira that will provide the actual gun in the link for, for active turn firepower. In reactive turn firepower, we have the Cenobites. Reverend Healers are up next. Reverend Healers have also changed. I don't actually care how they have changed. I'm not going to get my phone for this one because they're still bad. Uh, late looks the cool. We've got a plus one burst medikit. They went to actual mimetism six rather than mimetism three. Doesn't really matter. These things are within spitting distance of Mother Abara, and you will therefore take Mother Abara. They've got CC22, but no martial arts. They've got shock CCWs now. Just no, absolutely. The best one is probably the multi rifle. I'm going to actually use it for gunfighting. You lied to yourself. No, just use Mother, Mother Abara. Seriously, she's she's so close as to be within spitting distance of the cost, and she's incredibly better. Reverend Custodia is up next. I always had a soft spot for these, and they have changed very little. Um, the Lieutenant Hacking Device Plus is totally serviceable. Uh, the new thing really is just it's the Killer Hacker option. Do you need a Killer Hacker Custodia? Look, for 27 points, this is this is not bad. Because what this, this is is a BS-12 pitcher, independent gunfighter, fight person, Mimetism 6, BS-12. And they've, they, they were always BTS-3. Um, this is a potential unlinked option to run around and throw out pitchers. I don't know if, I, and this is a linkable option in the, the core team. At 27 points, it's kind of affordable. You will need to find your hacking, your actual hacking elsewhere. I don't know if I would run a reverend custodia. Like you're getting really expensive if you also have a custodia hacking device um, lieutenant, which is obviously risky. It's a hackable trinity vulnerable lieutenant, etc., etc. I've had good use of them, but you do have to be very careful with them. Uh, really, this, this is a moderately unchanged, moderately unchanged profile apart from the existence of the KHD, which is kind of nice. Senior Observance are our next change, and they have actually inexplicably... I was going to say, yeah, no, they've gotten more expensive. I don't know why the HMG cost one point more than it, useful, than it used to. Um, yeah, all of these are one point more expensive, with no difference to their ballistic skill, no difference to their mimetism. They still have neurocinetics, not total reaction. They gained immunity shock. So for one point, they gained immunity shock. That is... That is not bad to have. For one point, paying for immunity shock on them... I can see the argument for it because this is a piece that you want to, it's going to go unconscious eventually and you want to make it stand back up. The other obvious new addition is we have this marksmanship multi-sniper profile. I have a suspicion this is probably a little bit of a trap, but it's only a suspicion. Hitting on 16s 
is kind of cool. Is this is this going to be um, the new version of and of what's her name? Agima Marksman Lady Atlanta. Is this going to be the new version of Atlanta? Well, it's cheaper. You have a good doctor in the faction. It's certainly not hitting on 18s, but 16s is no slouch, and it has mimetism. But it has no multispectral visor. It's incredibly vulnerable to smoke shooting. I don't know. Previously, I would have said the Mark 12 is the one that you kind of want because it is SWC light and Nomads offer an SWC heavy faction. But potentially, look, potentially all of these are, are worth experimenting with. They were always kind of that, like they were just a little bit too expensive. I don't think this changes them. I'm going to very briefly jump into Villa Nomads and see if the multi-sniper rifle is available there. Okay, I just checked. No, it's not. So this is a Bakunin unique profile. Yeah, look, I'm going to make the call. If anything makes these vulnerable, if anything makes these viable, if anything, it's not the new profile that makes them viable. It's that Mother Abara exists. And in either Bakunin or Vanilla, you could feasibly, feasibly just maybe run Mother Abara as an unlinked profile by herself with one helper bot and have that helper bot stand behind a Sin Eater Observant. That might make Sin Eater Observants playable, despite the fact that they have otherwise gotten one point more expensive for Shock Immunity. So look, interesting change, uh, interesting new addition. It's the other pieces around them that might make them worthwhile, but I suspect that they are pro probably still mostly not. So Cassandra Kusanagi, um, she, she has received some small changes. Really in weapon loadout, she's lost a point of fizz, which I don't think anyone particularly cares about. She's kept a lot of her other stuff. She remains a lieutenant option, including the one with plus one SWC. The big change, because she really has not received any significant points drop, I think she went down by one point on like across the board, but the big change is this EM grenade launcher. That's kind of hella cool, actually. Um, I, I think I have time for this as a piece. So... I do not like the Spitfire Lieutenant Kusanagi as an unlinked piece. I don't think she's dangerous enough, fast enough, good enough to do this, to, to, like, to make things work. You can obviously link her in Bakunun. But in addition to the SWC plus one, which is going to sometimes be cool in vanilla and in Bakunin potentially, an EM grenade launcher at BS12 that you can spec fire with your Lieutenant order is kind of neat. Like, that's interesting. That's very interesting, actually. It's going to be a little bit of a vanity piece to pay, like, this many points for. But I could see, if you wanted to run a fire team, and you decided to put her in it, putting her in it for an EM grenade launcher has some interesting merits. I think the Spitfire is probably a piece that you generally still avoid. Like, not for sure, but... You know, would I do I care about the Spitfire over, for example, the the Moira with the HMG, ten points cheaper? Like, no, not particularly. Not at the same beat. Not the same ballistic skill. Yeah, she has shock immune, no wounded caps, which is really really nice. But but this EM grenade launcher, linked EM grenade launchers, have legs. This is very interesting. Again, we're running into very very expensive link territory, but that's kind of cool. All right, next up is Orphans of the Observance. Uh, this profile slaps. It's it's incredibly good. The only thing that keeps it from being like truly, truly amazing is that it's impossible to core link. It can only go in the Observance Harris teams, um, as often we can see it there, or in uh, non-pure cores, or linked to like a tag, which is actually pretty neat because there's an engineer in there. Um, MIM-3, BS-12, multi-marksman rifle, armor 2 for 26 points. Hot damn! That's a ghetto firepower piece. I would very comfortably have, like, it and just slap two moderators to it. I don't even care. Uh, make one of them a specialist, that's fine. Let's actually go, let's go right, go with a warding shotgun. Like, this is, this is the kind of, like, cheap firepower element to bulk out a lightweight Harris that I think is really, really good. So... This is excellent. Like, this is really, really good. All of these profiles have some merit. I honestly think you won't play the SMG that much just because you should be doing something else with these. These have a lot of things going for them. Very cool. Uh, speaking of things that are very cool, initiated observance. These are all outstanding profiles. BS-12 is lovely. Mimetism minus three is lovely. Stealth is lovely. And then we have infiltration, camouflage, boarding shotgun for 23 points. 
that effectively makes it an upgun zero. And then the very, very nice infiltration mine layer deployable repeater. Submachine gun on BS12, that's totally fine. Uh, and what this does is opens an archetype for observance. This opens up the, we can run a totally serviceable shell game midfield. When I was talking about Sharkos, or whatever they're called in Starmada, remember that I said, they suffer the sectoral skirmisher problem, which is that you almost always know more or less what could be under that camouflage marker. That is not going to be the case with Bakunin, where we can have we can have two initiated observants. There are some really good zero profiles, by the way, for very cheap. Let's just have a, a boarding shotgun zero for 19 points. Let's have a mine, a mine layer zero. 20 points and half in SWC, and let's have an EM mine or whatever, right? And then we add Brand to Castro wherever he should be. Um, this is some serious, serious, like affordable, cool skirmish stuff. And I have a lot of time for this. The only thing, like the only thing that is a challenge about all of this is that you need to build sort of into the rest of the faction around it at you know, an average of about 20 something points per model, it's not cheap, but there is a real genuine super cool shell game here. And you could take, you could take a Bakunin list that was just like three model Riot Girl team, three model Taskmaster, Morlock team, those still exist, they're incredible by the way, and just throw all of this camouflage stuff into it and add in a tag and you have an excellent like vanilla-esque list. So I like this a lot. Okay, moving on to the heavy infantry, and we have the penitent observance. Uh, these are probably one of the like easier to overhype things. Um, they are silhouette five heavy infantry that are just mim three, two wounds, armor five, and like an okay gun. The AP Spitfire, like yeah, okay, cool. EM grenade launcher plus one burst. You can put it in a three. These can only be Harry linked, by the way. You can put it in a three model Harry link alongside a couple of you know Cenobites or something one Cenobite, sorry, um, like one Orphan, one Cenobite, one Penitent, and what do you have? Yeah, you got a Burst 3 EM Grenade Launcher. Eh, it's kind of cute. What are you going to use it against? Maybe a tag. What are you going to do after you shoot a tag with it? Run into melee, I guess? Just use the AP Spitfire. Uh, you have a potential build your own AP Spitfire Burst 5. Like, it's fine. 40 points, you can't really complain. That is basically okay. But this looked like big, bulky, heavy infantry. No, what this actually is, is more of a combat, like it's a points-efficient, points-efficient armor-piercing rounds. That's what you're paying for here. I, It's probably maybe very marginally better than Taskmasters linked with Morlocks, except that Taskmasters are linked with Morlocks. Uh, I don't mind it. It is totally fine, but I think the standout profile is the AP Spitfire, and if you're taking this, you should be taking it because you have a plan for the weapon loadout, not because the profiles are inherently that efficient. However, talking about profiles that are inherently that efficient, Reverend Cinnabites. These are probably the closest thing to busted in the new the Bakunin update, apart from maybe the Brander Castro change. There's plenty of like good and interesting stuff, but these are the standout like absolute fuckers. Uh, all of these profiles are incredible, and a profile, by the way, to make the light shotgun not the best profile on a like skirmish aggressive heavy infantry unit, your other profiles have to slap, and these two do. I think these two are the ones that you will usually take. So it's chain rifle plus one burst, heavy pistol plus one burst, flash pulse. And it's the same cost as the light shotgun, and you get to choose between a larger template and a burst three heavy pistol, which very, very slightly outperforms the light shotgun, mostly off the back of the addition of the flash pulse and the chain rifle burst, the chain rifle template size. And then you have the heavy rocket launcher light shotgun. Uh, this is just incredible for 27 points, gives you the best of all worlds, and it can be put in an admittedly very expensive core link. But really, I think the place for these is if you can afford the SWC, we run just like light cheap links i would almost be inclined to run something like yeah see like this reverend this reverend fire team um it's like two centibytes and then whatever else you can get the only thing that is holding them back literally the only thing is the fact that they can there is no cheap link filler um the orphans are the closest maybe at 14 points and if you're taking a 14 point orphan, you're not using up the multi marksman rifles. But like this, this is probably where we're at, right? Like if we do something like one of the orphan profiles, one of these two, and then the two Cenobites. And that gives you, that's your uh, reverends. That's your, oh no, you can't put an orphan in that. Yep, so it has to be two, two orphans. Yeah, this is what I mean. It's, it's 
awkward to truly optimize the Cenobite fire teams in a way that it's not in, say, like military orders, where you can just be like, yep, three Teutons, Teutons are inherently good, go for it. These are actually better than Teutons. They are, they are cooked good, their stats are perfect. And it might actually legitimately be the right call to run three of them unlinked. That is how good these things are. I am actually scared of the idea of these just running at me like they're Mimetism 6 Teutons. Uh, yeah, no, I think I'm I think I'm decided. This this actually scares me more. If you're running a reverence fire team, you'll put two centibytes in it. If you're running an observance fire team, you'll put one centibyte in it because the profiles are cooked. But if you are not doing either of those things and you can afford it, one or two or three of like literally just this profile is ridiculously incredible. They are so, so good. They will trade up so reliably, use their impetuous order, get them forward, etc. Um, just scary. Just like MIM, MIM 6, the stats are fine. BS 11 is not fantastic, but their melee is good enough as well. And this one, by the way, plus one burst means plus one in melee. Excellent, excellent pace. Truly like stand out. The only thing that is remotely holding them back is the fire team compositions, which thankfully hold them back slightly, but stand out winner. So the demonologists we've talked about already, Robin Hook we've talked about already, and then we get to the stigmata, and of course the only difference really is that the stigmata is 1.5 SWC in Bakunin, which makes it marginally easier to use. It's otherwise functionally the same pace. So that brings us effectively to sort of how how is Bakunin now positioned as a sectoral? And I think it's positioned really, really well. It's a sectoral that feels genuinely like feature complete in a way that not a lot of them actually are. Most sectorals have like one good thing that they can do. And it might be a really good thing, but it's rare, like th that's the nature of sectorals is that there tends to be like you know, one archetype. It's rare that you see something like Hassassin Baram, for example, where there are actually a couple of like viable ways to play it that rely on different pieces where it's the like, hey guys, this is the you know, two, three, or four-man fire teams, and the Fides, and the Delami, and then we have this list over here, which is Sunduk Butts, and good luck with dealing with the Sunduk Butts and the Delami, etc. And they, they have, like, really meaningfully differently textured play experiences. Bakunin goes beyond even that. If, if like, if Toha were a sectoral, Bakunin would be almost as feature-complete now as Toha is. And that's, that is genuinely saying something. I think you have... You obviously you have you have one fire team, you have one core, you have unlimited duos. The duos are fine. Um, there's not like a ton going on in terms of what you're going to be doing with the duos. You could duo like there's no there's no roadbot Oko duo, right? It's not if you don't have the you don't have the Oko duo situation, but you have totally fine fire teams, and you actually have you have a complete skirmish setup. You have. Uh, excellent heavy infantry in a variety of different options genuinely like truly good it's not heavy heavy infantry the, obviously the, i mean you have the taskmasters which are you know kind of tough but really it's all two wound stuff um you have two different tags both of them are good both of them are very different you have a full remote suite you can run multiple different very viable cores genuinely genuinely interesting very complete sectoral now. You could play a Bakunin in a tournament and you could run two hugely different lists, both of which can play like very strong hacking games, very strong heavy infantry or light infantry or skirmisher, do very different things. You even have the split of like, this is my list with a Riot Girl core link for MSV1, and this is my list with a, with a Moira core link for Mimetism 6. Your opponent never knows exactly what they will be playing into, it's strong. I mean, your opponent knows that they won't be playing into long arms because long arms still completely suck, even with Robin Hook joining them. But like, you know, you can't have everything. So strong, strong, powerful, cool stuff in Bakunin. In terms of the high watermark of power, right? In terms of, okay, but you the strongest Bakunin list you have, how is it going to perform? I don't know if the addition of the Moiras actually hugely changes the power level of Bakunin. And the reason why is that the links are, they, there is no, there's no, like, if you want a pure link, you're paying for expensive. And the wild cards that are available in the faction are not cheap. Um, you're not putting cyclones into a reverend list to make it, a reverend link to make it cheaper. So trying to build and cost these links is going to very quickly show you that a, a Moira-centric fact, like, 
Moira-centric army might be good, but there's tons of points played into that, and they're not going to be as tough as Riot Girls are. They'll have their mimetism, but they won't have the wounds, the dodge, etc. So I don't think Reverend Moira's, Reverend Custodia's, Cenobites, etc., I don't think huge links of them is going to be a new high watermark power Bakunin link list, but they will be viable, solid, and good, and I also like them in like three model, three model core, three model setups. What is going to lift the power level of Bakunin is the changes to the independent elements and the uplift of some things that can be run as independents. So like uh, Cenobites as independent pieces, uh, in, in Orphans of the Observance, even as independent pieces. Although realistically, I think they go in a light, and this, this multi-marksman rifle goes in like a light link. Uh, initiated observance, rounding out the skirmisher midfield alongside zeros. Brand de Castro raises the power level of Bakunin. This, like, this profile change on Bran probably has a bigger impact on the high watermark of power that Bakunin now has access to than like any of the new... Moira's and Moira-like pieces, because this profile is is completely fucked beyond belief and it's going to win games by itself on the first turn. Um, so, yeah, look, where do we stand? Bakunin can now do a very interesting, very viable hacking game, including midfield hacking defense. They can do warbands, they can do skirmishes, they have skirmishes in enough volume that their skirmisher midfield generally is obfuscated, so you don't know what's under every individual... Um, every individual uh, thing. They have airborne now in terms of the parachutists in addition to the Meteor Zond. They have the best uh, Takemotos remotes in Season 14. They have great Little Harry's teams. They have great Big Harry's teams. They even have a good tag. Bakunin, if you wanted to literally just play Bakunin forever, you would have a faction that is almost as complete as many vanilla factions, and including like as, as Toha. You could play these as a Toha-like faction. Are they going to be more powerful? Probably not, but there are things about them that will be very strong. Overall, this is a super interesting update. It is exciting, and there are bits of it that are scary. And I hope you've enjoyed this hot take, and I'll see you next time.